In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the top tools that I use in Capture One to transform my landscape photography. So I'm diving into Capture One today and I've got a few images from my recent trip to Mull lined up to take through the Capture One editing process. Now what I want to try and do in this video is try and make it fairly quick and show you some of the tools that I mostly rely on to do my landscape editing. Um, there's obviously a huge um, number of things that you can do to your images in Capture One. I'm not a Capture One power user, I know a few tips and tricks, um, and I think I get generally decent results. So um, I'm going to take you basically through how I would turn these photos into a little bit more polished um, photographs rather than sort of the snaps that they are right now. So I'm going to start off with this one here. Um, I, I like this shot. Um, I think compositionally we've got some nice rocks in the foreground, a bit of slow shutter on this water in the midground, and we have got some nice mountain and cloud detail in the background. Um, so I don't think it's too bad. Um, but there's quite a few things that I want to do to uh, just neaten it up, make it look a bit better. I'm going to start out straight away uh, in the white balance, of course. Um, it's a little bit on the green side, so I'm going to shift that tint up slightly. It's already looking a bit better. And maybe add a little bit more warmth. Okay, um, looking at the exposure overall, I think the highlights are a little bright, certainly in this part of the water here and in the sky. So I'm going to bring down those highlights a touch, maybe boost the shadows because we've got a lot of um, dark areas around here. So that can go up, not too much. As soon as we start going too far, then it gets a little bit too bright. You get a bit of an HDRE look, don't want that. So a subtle approach here, somewhere around plus 20. Um, now the whites and the blacks, I'm not gonna do anything, and I'm certainly not gonna touch the clarity or structure, at least not at this point. Um, but back in the main exposure tab, maybe brighten it just a touch. And the saturation, I'm leaving exactly where it is. Okay, so the first tool that I want to come to is the Curve tool. Now, I don't often do a lot with the uh, with the Curve tool in Capture One or Lightroom. I am trying to learn a little bit more about exactly how it works, but what I do know is that in Capture One, there are a number of different ways of working with it. You can have the standard RGB curve, um, or there's the Luma curve, which only affects the brightness and uh, the uh, brightness and shadows, doesn't affect the colors. Um, so this is a good way of kind of starting to add a little bit of contrast again very very subtle approach is required here so I want to bring this down here and up in the top maybe a little bit less than that to form a classic S curve bringing down those shadows bringing up the highlights a little bit boosting that contrast now back in the RGB what I want to do is just lift up this bottom left point what this is going to do in fact no what we'll need to do is maybe add a couple of points here and then bring it up and that's just going to bring up that black point as you as I do you can see it starts to give a little bit of a faded filmic look to the shot which I really like I think that's good okay um, if we go into the the red green and blue channels this is when you can basically adjust um, the amount of different the color channels um, in the picture if we bring up the reds here we're adding red to our shadows if we bring it this way we're adding green or blue to our shadows and you can do that in any of the channels. So it's a very effective way of, um, of editing your, your photos. Now I tend not to do loads of this because I prefer to do the, my color work using the color editor and color balance. So um, I'm gonna leave the curve tool there and go straight over to the next uh, tool that I'm gonna show, which is the color editor. Now in some of the uh, playing around we've done so far, we have slightly shifted some of the color tones. This blue up here is a little bit on the purpley side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into our magenta and just adjust that hue. And as I do move it right up and down, you can see actually how much magenta there is in this image. Right at the top, we've changed this to a much more purpley tone. Right at the bottom, it's gone uh, to the blue which I actually really want. Um, I don't want any purple tones in this. 
and I think uh, whacking that right down and getting that rich blue tone back in the water here and in the sky is exactly what I want. I'm going to do the same with um, this one just in case there is any purple in there. I don't think there is. Um, in the blue channel then, let's grab that and move it slightly to the left. If we go all the way, then we get a very cyan looking sky. It looks very unnatural. I don't want that at all. So it's a subtle approach somewhere around there and I'm going to darken it down and in so doing it's just adding a lot more depth to the sky again don't want to go too far it starts to look very unnatural and fake um, so somewhere around minus 10 and I might even just slightly adjust the saturation bring that down a little bit because once you darken a color you also increase the saturation so I don't want it to be too um, of an oversaturated blue I think that's looking good um, the greens here we could go into the green channel and adjust the hue and bring them from a from an emerald green into slightly more of an autumnal um, uh, warmer yellowy green which I think looks quite nice um, what about that brightness let's up that lightness a little bit just help it stand out and the yellow the yellow I'm going to bring down again just a touch just to try and um, separate the color tones on this on these rocks here it is there's a lot of yellow in there but because we've kind of moved that green into the into the slightly yellow tones all the tones on the grass and now the rocks are kind of blending together which i want to avoid so i'm going to bring that, that down and a little bit on the orange tab and now we've got a bit of separation in those colors which i think looks good obviously this is all completely non-destructive so i'm going back and i'm just adjusting this green double checking exactly how I want it to look because maybe I maybe I don't want to go into the yellows or maybe I do yeah yeah I like it I like it let's stick with that okay um right next up though is the color balance tool number three and this allows you to add color into your shadows into your midtones into your highlights now um in Lightroom they've got the uh what's it called the split toning tool where you can add shadows or highlights now I believe that Lightroom is about to release uh, a new tool which is a lot similar a lot more similar to uh, what we've got in Capture One um, so this is probably going to be much more um, usable in uh, in Lightroom after this but I'm going to bring the shadow a little bit more into this into these blues now there's two ways of doing this you can either grab uh, the bit in the middle and drag it one way into your color the further out you drag it the more saturated that color becomes so you can add just a little bit or you can add a lot um, or you can literally grab the tab on the outside of the color and drag that into exactly the color you want and then using this tab you can adjust the saturation I prefer just grabbing it and moving it around myself and using it as a bit of inspiration um, for the kind of color toning that you want. I think for this, keeping it in that blue looks quite good. In the highlights, I might add a little bit more warmth. I think something like that looks quite nice. And what about our midtones? I might not want to do a lot to the midtones because there's a lot of there's a lot of midtone um, in this shot. So moving the midtone color basically moves all the colors and so I don't want to do too much with that and in fact I might just keep it where it was maybe slightly in the orange let's turn that up no maybe a, just a tiny touch okay something like that um, and at this point as well if you go into the shadows the midtones and highlights tool um, in the color balance themselves you can increase the shadows if you want and again I quite like doing that it's adding a little bit more of that uh, filmic haze um, the mid-tones we could grab that move that around yeah I think adding a little bit of mid-tone lightness looks good and then the highlights we can grab that again maybe pull that down ever so slightly now if you hover over the reset button and just hold down um, alt or command and click then you can reset just that tool so we can see this is before we've done the color balance and this is after and I think that little bit of um, that color grading has added a lot it's, it's sort of warmed the scene up and I think given it a bit more of a cinematic effect I quite like that okay 
Let's move on. And the next tool that I want to use is going to be more about layers because I want to add in a linear gradient mask or the um, which I think is called basically the same thing in Lightroom. Um, what this is going to do is let me draw a mask over the top of my scene and allow me to selectively edit the sky. Um, if we just press M to show that mask, then you can see that everything that is red is going to be affected, everything that isn't, isn't. And in between these lines, it obviously feathers out to get a natural blend. And the more you feather it, the more of a slow blend that's going to be. Or if you didn't feather it at all and just did something like this, then you're going to get a very, very sharp edge to where your effect is. Um, we don't want that. Uh, okay, we've done this the wrong way. So let's just flippity flip this round. As you can see, it's very easy to edit where this is. Now, I want this to be a natural blend into my, uh, into my sky. So something like this looks pretty good. Press M to hide the mask. Now you can see exactly the effects that you're going to be uh, applying. Let's bring that exposure down. Bring that contrast up. I want to try and bring out some of the details in the clouds, and this is a great way of doing it. Uh, the highlights are going to bring down a touch. And I'm also going to bring up the clarity, because this is what's going to really separate out the, the fine details of the clouds against the blue background. You don't want to go overboard. You do right to the top. It looks very, very crunchy and, and processed. So again, it's about subtlety. Somewhere around 20, I think, looks pretty decent. And we can have a play with the others, maybe bring those shadows up a little bit. I think that's looking pretty good. If we just turn, because it's on a, on a different layer, we can just turn that layer on and off. So we can see it's just brought out a bit of detail. And what I also like is that because it is feathered over the top of this mountain, if you just pay attention to, um, to the mountain, if we just zoom in um, a little bit and turn that off and on, it's actually added some extra clarity to um, to the rocks. It's brought out some of those details. Now I was going to try and mask out the mountain so that it isn't applying, but having done it, I actually think it looks really nice. It's, it makes them pop out from the background um, a little bit more. Bit of a happy coincidence, I suppose. So let's let's keep it. Let's not do anything with that. But I do want to add another layer, and I'm going to bring in another um, graduated filter this time dragging up from the bottom, press our M to see exactly where the mask is, and then hide it. And I just want to bring the exposure down. I just want to darken the bottom part of that scene, and in so doing, draw the eye to the middle of the scene. So your eye is drawn to the brightest part. We want that to be the middle of the picture. There's a lot of just sort of empty rocks down here, and we don't really want to um, focus on that too much. Okay. And I think that's looking pretty decent overall if we just go to the master reset button up here and again hold down command or alt click that's not doing anything because that isn't how you do that we have a new before and after tool we can go into that and slide it along here's our before it's very green it's dark we haven't got a lot of contrast and now we've got a much more um i think artful considered image um there's a couple more things that i still want to do to this so let's just turn that before and after tool off um i'm going to uh, bring in another layer now the thing to do as well a couple of people commented on one of my last capture one videos in that i should name my layers so that i know what they are they are absolutely right i should do but i am quite messy as a person if you could see the rest of my studio behind this camera you would be appalled um, and as a result I kind of I am a bit messy in my editing um, so I, I never tend to do that but it is good practice so let's just do that that one let's just call it sky and for the rest of this video I'm going to try and get into the habit ground and this one is going to be water and what we're going to do is bring in the brush tool, draw mask, and I'm going to brush in, press M on this water here, a little bit around here, and a little bit down here, but mostly on this white there because it's still a little bit blown out. Hides that mask. Um, I want to bring the highlights down a touch, but I also want to bring up the clarity. And as I do, we just bring out a bit more of the detail. Could maybe even see about bringing up the structure. No, structure doesn't really do anything good. Contrast can go up. 
Shadows can go up. Oh yeah, shadows up a bit. The more we bring the shadows up, the more we get a bit more detail on the water here, which I actually really like. Um, so that's pretty nice. And we can turn it off and on, off and on. It's just brought out that water in a way that like, it hasn't blown it out, it hasn't made it too bright, but it allows it to stand out in the scene. I think without it, there's too much shadow around here. It, it's sort of, I don't know, it's not difficult to see, obviously, but it's not quite, it doesn't stand out in a way that I want it to. So I think that looks a little bit better. Um, now I'm gonna bring in another um, adjustment layer and this one, I'm just going to put selective brighten. So we know what it is. And again, with our brush tool, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the exposure and in this uh, tool what I'm going to do right if you right click on the screen uh, you can bring down the flow Now the flow basically means that every time you brush you're only brushing a very very small amount of the total effect this is basically a percentage if your flow is at a hundred then every time you brush, you are brushing in 100% of that effect. So if you've got a small flow, say only 2%, or 3 then you are only brushing in 3% at a time. That allows you to paint the effect in, build it up with each stroke, which is great because what I want to do is build up that effect on these rocks down here and just add in some extra light falling on these, maybe a little bit around here, basically dodging and burning. Just trying to selectively bring in some details here. And maybe a little bit on this mountain up here. And around here, everywhere where there kind of already is some light. Something like this I think looks pretty nice. And we'll just turn that off and on. We can see exactly what that's done. It might be a bit too much maybe. The good thing is about working in layers in Capture One rather than um, just using the effect in, in Lightroom is that whatever you've done you can just grab the opacity slider and tone down that whole layer from zero all the way back up so it means that you've got a lot more control over what it's applying and I think actually somewhere around 70 percent it's just a little bit more subtle it blends with the scene um, that bit more which I think looks great. I don't think there's loads more that I want to do on this shot. Um, I'm just going to go back to my background layer and zoom in over here because there is this bit of blue, what is that, rope, which is distracting me a touch. So I'm just going to do a healing mask like this, paint it on. It's going to select another area. Let's just put that. And I don't think you would ever notice that that was there. Back to our background. Yeah, that's gone. It was just slightly slightly distracting and now you wouldn't notice that it was ever there so there you go there's an extra tool for free because that wasn't one of my five tips that i originally had um so i think that is pretty much done um it's it's a very different edit to the one that i'd done originally but i'm really pleased with how that looks and for um i don't know how long i've been going an amount of time um, i think that's looking pretty good so let's move on to the next one and this has actually taken about 10 minutes after the first one. Um, it's in basically the same area in um, in Mull. So let's start off and straight away it needs to be a little bit brighter. In fact, you know what, what we could do, what I might start doing, when I work in Photoshop, I, the first thing I always do is duplicate that base layer so that I can always go back to the base if I need to. Maybe that's something I should be doing here if that's how you work, let me let me know. Um, actually, I don't think I need to because you've got the before and after. It makes it very easy. You know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, exposure up. It's too bright. Uh, sorry, it's too dark overall. We've started to blow out that sky. So let's bring back down the brightness a little bit, and let's bring down the highlights, basically all the way. Um, it's also quite green, so in the white balance, let's bring up the tint uh, again and try and adjust that, maybe a little bit much. Something around there is looking good. We can see our before and after again. Yeah, I mean, there's a few things I've done for sure is that we've now got a purpley blue sky, so I definitely want to go back into our color editor 
grab that magenta, bring that back into in particular attention to around the clouds because there's a lot of fringing. And so I want to bring that down, not all the way because it goes to cyan, somewhere in the middle, about there. Okay, and the blue as well, we can bring that back and sort of get rid of some of that purple cast that our white balance has put in. And we could maybe play around a touch with that. So here's the next thing I want to show. What I want to do is is bring down the uh, the blue in the sky, but not in the reflection in the water. Because if we bring it down and reflect in the water, it gets too dark. Um, and I don't like that. I like it as it is here. But I just want it to be a bit richer and deeper in the sky. So here again, we're going to go up to our... Uh, layers. I'm going to create a new layer with a um, adjustment uh, filter like this and this one I'm just going to put blue sky and in the color editor I'm going to grab that blue and bring it down. As you can see because we've just got that filter in on the sky it's only affecting the sky so whatever we do here it's not doing it to the blue down here which is just what we want. Still don't want to bring it down all the way somewhere around there um, I think looks spot on um, and while we're at it we can add a little bit of clarity on those clouds with maybe a little bit of contrast I think that looks pretty decent actually the next thing I want to show is using styles and presets in Capture One because there are many styles and presets that you can get. Capture One does loads of packs which are really good which I'm going to show you. Um, you can make your own and there are various ones that you can download from people as well. Um, I really like working with them in Capture One and I'm going to show you why. So let's just have a quick flick through. Um, they have these latitude deep forests um, and as you can see you just scroll over them and just kind of have a look at the effects that they would um, that they would have on your image. I don't dislike Brasher Dark. We'll come back to that. Let's have a look, have a look at Sunbound. Oh no, it's too too orangey and blue. I'm not keen on that. What about matte? Oh yeah, I like a bit of matte. Okay. Maybe black and white. I haven't done a black and white edit on this one. Maybe we could do that. I think maybe not though. What about seasonal? So one of the things I love, and I say this every time I work with presets, is that I love just scrolling over them and using it fully as um, inspiration for kind of where you might want to take your image. Because I do this professionally, but I still don't start out knowing exactly what look I want for my image. I still love just going through and experimenting and seeing what I can come out with. And this is a great way of being like, oh, maybe like a cooler tone is, is going to be um, how I want to go, or maybe a more rich, warmer autumnal tone. Um, you don't necessarily know until you try these things. So I kind of think that having presets um, installed um, in your uh, in your toolbox is a really really good way of going. Going back to the mats because I definitely like how some of these looked and I think my favorite is mat 5. MT05. It's taken out some of those oranges, um, emphasized some of those blues and I think that works really really well for the way that the rocks look down in the bottom of the, of the scene and for the castle itself. But Crucially with working with presets, the thing to do is not to just one click apply a preset and then consider your image done. And Capture One makes that even easier to um, to avoid by applying it to a new layer. So if we right click on this, apply to new layer, and we go back into our into our edits, we can see now in our layers we have MT05, which means not only can we turn it off if we don't like it, which makes it easy to see that before and after so again you can see very clearly sort of removed some of that yellow kept we keep this orange detail on this um like is that lichen moss whatever it is on the um, on the rocks um but it's given it a, a nice sort of filmic feel which is, I'm, I'm really really into but it's a little bit much and so it allows you with the opacity slider just to pull it back and you can start from zero and just build it up to the point where you're happy, which for me I think is around, yeah, around 80. 
not quite at the 100%, so still a big effect, but not quite um, as it was. Um, it's a really great way of working, and then it's just one of the layers in your edits. You're not just one click applying, you're doing things around it, which um, I think is exactly what, uh, what you should be doing. Um, okay, I'm gonna add in another layer now. And this one, I'm going to use a radial filter. I'm gonna put it in basically down here. And let's just put, let's call it radial, radial rocks, because it does. And I'm gonna up that exposure. I don't know what's happening. Oh, I see. We need to invert the mask. Yeah, press M. The radial filter we've done has applied the mask everywhere except in the circle. Now what we can do is just right click and go invert mask. Bing! And now our effect is applying where we want it, in the middle. Good tip to know. Press M, hide the mask, and now we can start making those adjustments. I want to brighten up these rocks. I also want to brighten up the water in here. So I think we can maybe up those shadows a bit. Not too much. Highlights can... Yeah, you know, there's actually very little in the highlights, so we can leave those. Let's say, what about the whites? What are they doing? Yeah, we can push those up. Okay, and then we can just flick that off and on. And it's just brought a bit more detail back on those rocks. It just helps make them stand out that little bit more which I think looks pretty nice, but I think I have gone a bit too bright. So again, we can grab that opacity and bring it down somewhere around there. And I just eyeball all of these effects. I'm not like editing to a strict plan. I just move a slider and then see what point it gets to where I'm happy. So now I'm gonna add in another radial filter, but this one is gonna be radial castle. And we're going to put it in, press M to see our mask. Uh, can I press Control i to invert it? No, I cannot. Back in we go. Right click, invert mask, and then we can adjust it with these sliders. You know, this can let you adjust the amount of feather on that mask by just grabbing these things and moving them in and out, which is great. Um, and so what I want to do is place this over the castle so that it's mostly the castle that's being affected. But, crucially, if we just left this as it is and say up to our exposure, you can see that it's also increasing the exposure around the sky. You definitely don't want that to happen. So the way of doing that is by using right click and we go with Luma Range. Now Luma Range, this is a tool that's Lightroom uh, fairly recently added as well, but it allows you to tell Capture One that you don't want the effect to be applied in either the very light or the very dark areas. So if we just click Display Mask so we can see where it is, and we can see that it's applying in the sky all around here, but we don't want that. I want it to be applied to the shadowy areas because there's too much shadow on that castle. We want it to stand out. So the way we do that is just by grabbing this tab up here and bring it down. And as we do, look at that, disappears from the clouds. We keep on going, disappears from the blue sky. It will start to disappear from some of the castle as well, and that's fine. I think somewhere around here. Looks great. Um, so let's apply that. And then uh, let's press M again to show the mask. Now, what I also want to do is I want to refine, I want to get rid of this bit of the mask and I can't exactly remember how to do that. I think if I rasterize this mask and then get the brush tool on it, draw mask, but what I want to do is erase. How would I go about erasing that? Sometimes I wish I had someone right next to me. Erase mask, here we go. Okay, because I've rasterized that mask, I can now go in. So I've used two mask refining tools. I've used a Luma range to tell it I don't want it in the sky, and then I've used the erase mask tool to go and get rid of that. If I'd have just used the erase mask tool, there is no way I could have been that um, accurate with where that mask goes. If we zoom right in, you can see that I have been able to um, apply the mask only to the shadowy parts of the tree in the castle. It hasn't bled into the sky at all. So it's a really, really neat, oh dear, it's a really neat mask, which is perfect. 
Now we can get our exposure. We can raise it up a little bit. We can maybe let's hide the mask. Raise our, up our brightness and maybe up those shadows a little bit. We want it to stand out. So we want, and before it was very shadowy. So we do want to go quite far with this. The highlights can come down. And let's up a bit of clarity because adding some clarity in is really going to help bring out some of the details on those rocks. Oops. Nope. Zoom back out to here. Okay, there's a couple of things that I want to do. First of all, we've lost a bit of detail on here, so let's go back into this mask, right click and uh, go refine mask, display the mask, and this is just going to basically blur it out. So if, you, if we have no refining, you can see we've got a lot of hard edges between where the mask is and is not applying on this castle. And what that's doing is making everything look a bit weird we've lost details on the brickwork here so by refining the mask it basically blurs it out and as you can see as we refine that it just brings it just helps everything blend together a little more naturally on the on these details um, but it hasn't it hasn't done anything else with where our mask is applying. It hasn't um, made it blur over these um, trees and into the sky. So the very, very powerful tools of how to mask where you want. The other thing I want to change, though, is I just want to take it a little bit out of this mountain here because it's applying too much. We've got nice details here without it. And once we apply this, it I don't like what it does to the castle. So let's go back in. And uh, what do I need? erase mask but I'm going to bring down my flow bring down the size um, and also up uh, bring down the hardness I want a soft edged brush and we're going to paint over here and over here because I've got a soft edge if I go over the trees you can't really notice So I think like that, and then we turn it on and off, and we can see that it isn't applying, Mr. Bit, isn't applying to the mountain anymore. It's just applying to the castle and the trees in the foreground. Perfect. Off and on, off and on. Now the castle stands out in a way that it didn't really before. I think that looks a lot better. So let's go back and have a look at our before and after. Before. It was quite shadowy, our tones were looking, weren't looking were looking that good. Now we've got a really nice filmic, uh, filmic uh, preset applied. We've got bolder blues in the sky. Actually, you know what, I think we could go a little bit more with that, um, with that sky. Let's go back to our background. No, let's go to our blue sky. Let's just play with our contrast, maybe bring down that exposure. And back into our blue. Can adjust that. Have we got any magentas? Nope. And maybe bring down that brightness even more. Okay, now let's go and have a look at our before and after. Before, shadowy, dark, an okay snap. And now we've got something that stands out a lot more. Really pleased with this, and um, I think I'm going to move on to another one and let's make this one a bit quicker and the first thing I want to do is do a crop on this and I think I want to do a three by four crop it pings into place once you've told it what crop you want um, because there's a lot of the reason I know that I want a, a slightly squatter crop it's because we've got a lot of cloud detail in the top that we don't need and a lot of spare foreground detail most of the interest in the image is sort of in the middle so I wanted to see what if um, what this uh, aspect ratio looks like something around here um, could look quite nice I wonder what a one-to-one -one would look like let's just try a square crop on this shot I think that might look quite nice. Okay. See, here's here's a here's a little thing. 
when I took this, there was a a, a a kite border guy going around here, and I kind of like that in the shot, but it's um it's not in the shot now. This this person walking along the beach is kind of the figure we that that we want. It it gives some scale to the whole scene. And so having this up there, it doesn't really tell any story. It's not it's not there, so it's a bit of a distraction. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually get rid of that. Um, so let's just go back to our crop and sort of move that back into place. I think around there it looks really nice. Go off that. So yeah, first thing I'm going to do is just zoom in on that. And we're just going to use our tool here, paint over it, ping. It's done a great job in getting rid. But I also want to get rid of some of the extra figures down here. You, you, you guys. Okay, that hasn't done a super good job. Something like that. Is this cloning or is this... Maybe it doesn't matter. Oh, okay, healing mask or cloning mask. Let's zoom in a bit more down here now, just to make sure that we can make our mask go only where we want. Smaller brush. Oh, we can just paint. If I'm doing a lot of object removal, I go over into Photoshop, because Photoshop has very, very powerful tools for object removal. Whereas I find that Capture One, it's not easy to do. So let's undo that. And maybe I'm going to use the clone tool. See if I can do a better job. In order to clone, a source point must be defined. Alt click to find a source point. Okay, Alt click. Is this going to help me? Okay, we could maybe sort of do a bit. Make it look like an extra bit of rock, and then I'll click here. It's um, it's rough. It's a rough. It's a rough job that I've that I've done. Um, but I think from a distance, let's also get rid of this dog. I'm sorry, dog, but you are not required. Yeah, it's from a from a distance maybe oh dear no. Um you wouldn't be able to tell. Let's just turn that off and go to this. Yeah, it's okay. Um it's it's not great. I, if I was doing this if I wanted it to be a neater job, I would certainly have gone into Photoshop um to give this a go. Let's make the first thing we do going into our styles and presets and have a little look because it, again this is a bit of a cheat way of applying a good effect and then putting your edits on top. Um Latitude Sunbound. Let's have a look at some of these bright orange, orangey ones. See if any of them really kind of let us lean into that nice bright beachy effect. Some of them are a little bit orange, which I don't love. Mm -hmm. Cinematic. I quite like what that's done to the to the blue water. Um, okay, film. We all the way down. Let's keep having a look. Oh, okay, film seven. Yeah, I like film seven plus. We're going to apply that to a new layer. Contains the following settings that cannot be put in a layer. Grain. That's fine. I don't want film grain, so I'll apply it partially. So all that color toning is on that layer, but the film grain isn't, that's fine. So now we've got that um, in place, what we can do now is let's uh, apply a new layer, but because it's a new layer there's no masking applied, it's empty, so anything we do, exposure, isn't going to apply. So what we need to do is just right click on it and go fill mask. And this is basically giving us a new background in order to edit on over the top of what else we've, um, the other things we've gone. Um, first thing I'm going to do, go down to our color editor. I'm going to go to the advanced tab this time and get our little color picker. And I'm going to click on the beach because the beach has now gone a bit green and I don't know, the colors are a bit off 
to to my eye so we're gonna as you can see once you click it, it, it sort of isolates that color palette but I want to expand it out to include some of these greens uh, if we just press click selected color range we can see exactly where it's applying and so we could drag it further out we can drag it all the way and as you do you see what it's bringing in more of these these blues but we don't want that we want it basically just on these yellows and greens around here and tick that and let's turn our hue this way there we go much more into like yellowy orange it's gonna fit really nicely maybe oh dear no desaturated a little bit but not that much and maybe increase the lightness that's just helping it look a bit more like a really nice um, I don't know it's almost like a um, a Bahamasy beach if we just turn that off very green the colors that we've applied in that first preset don't look great now it's brought it back into a really lovely beach tone um, okay that's good that's looking really nice um, next up though I just want to take off the edge of um, these blues there might be a touch um, a touch too saturated so I'm going to click on that point there expand it out to include more we can click view selected color range let's do this expand it out something like that and just slightly bring the edge off that saturation and also up the lightness a little bit let's view it in context okay hold alt click reset see what difference those colors have made oh yeah I think that's really made a lot that look how that beach has popped from a greeny yellow into a, a into a beautiful color tone I'm really pleased with how that's looking okay a couple more things we want another new layer this time we want a adjustment fill let's just put um, color tones top one now sky um, the sky is is very is very washed out so I want to bring the exposure down maybe bring up that contrast a touch and bring those highlights down. oh not too much on the highlights very small amount what about the clarity a little bit of cloud detail in there but not quite so much somewhere around there I think looks good what if we brought that exposure no definitely looking better if we just turn it off and on the sky has gone from being very washed out to now nice and even but what we've done is made these too dark so again right click luma range display mask and then we grab the dark one this time and bring it up and as we do see how it that mask disappears from these rocks until we get to about there about midpoint turn it off that's looking good keep on going so we can basically go right the way up so that it's completely erased from all these rocks apply there let's do another one and let's do mask rocks um, we're going to get the brush tool maybe make it a little bit bigger maybe bring that uh, hardness up so it's not quite so feathered and increase our flow I want to display the mask and I'm going to paint this on to our rocks like that a little bit on these ones and this one here in the middle now I know what you're thinking I paint on oh, maybe a little bit around here too um, that's a horrible mask that's gone everywhere so again we refine it with our luma range pop that in drag it down from the top it's no longer applying to the sea to the sky we've just got a very very narrow narrow range looks good we can do that let's then go to refine mask and just sort of move the slider up make it blend in really nicely and let's start by hiding the mask upping our exposure maybe increasing the contrast a little bit there's brightness is that looking weird on these rocks yeah I think it might be I think what we need to do is go back in and refine this luma range if we display the mask yeah 
needed to apply to more of this rock. Okay, yeah, that looks a lot more even, and it's it's bringing in a bit of this this sea here, but I don't mind it because it was very dark, and actually it's sort of neatening things up. Okay, let's go back. I think that's looking good. What about a little bit of clarity, just to make those details pop out? Not too much. What's it doing on the here? It's important to zoom in and check your details. Just make sure that it isn't doing anything too funky. That's looking good. Um, overall, I think I'm really pleased with how this shot is coming out. So the last thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to close my color balance. We're going to go to... Oh, no, wait. I wanted my color balance. Color balance. Open it up. Three-way. I'm going to put a bit of... Uh, blues down in our shadows keep on going until it looks good something like that I don't think I want to do much with the highlights but I do want to have a look at what it'd be like adding a bit of blue to the to the midtones as well to cool it down a bit I mean we could go all the way so we've got a lot of sort of orangey warmer tones in the midtones and I I don't want that quite so much. What about in the cyan like this? Yeah, I quite like that. Let's just have a look at the highlights. Just realise what I'm doing. <laughs> this is the problem. If I'm not paying attention, um, I'm applying this to our mask on the rocks, which we should not have done. So reset that. What I need to be doing is putting it on an entirely new layer. Honestly, people who are good with Capture One probably shouting at the screen then, realizing what I've been doing wrong. New layer, this one we're going to call Color Balance. Right click, Fill Mask. I was wondering why everything seemed really like so subtle and I couldn't even see it. Right, back into our shadows. Here we go. Like this. And then we increase that saturation on the shadows. Yep, I like that. Increase the brightness. Give it a slight filmic look. Um, the midtones. Yep. Yeah, I don't want to do loads. In fact, I don't want to do any on the midtones. What about our highlights? Adding a little bit of warmth to our highlights. What would it be like adding cool tones to our highlights? Magenta tones. Interesting. Yeah, cool tones. A little bit of cool tones in the highlights. We could add warmth to our shadows. No, we couldn't. Don't like that. But we could go a little bit bluey magenta -y, but tone it down just a touch. Okay. Alt and click look before and after. I like what that's done. I do. I'm really pleased with the shot overall, actually. Really pleased with it. I love that figure. Just adds so much like size context to the whole scene. Um, yeah, overall, I'm really, really pleased with this. Um, so I think at this point, I'm going to call this image finished, and we're going to go on to the last one. I know I said this was going to be quick, and it hasn't been. I think we've been going for about an hour now, so let's be very, very quick. Straight away, crop. I want a 3 by 4 So let's just bring that down. It's going to pop into place. We want to slightly adjust the angle. Um, sort of straighten up that horizon. I think about there looks basically fine. Um, I might even just grab that crop tool and move it up a little bit. So we've got this uh, gate falling more in the lower thirds of the scene. Cool, right, new layer with a graduated tool. Exposure slightly down. Contrast slightly up, cool. One at the bottom, bring that in exposure down. Again, bringing the eye to that gate in the middle, which we're going to emphasize this time with another new layer and a... oops, sorry. Another new layer and a radial tool. Of course, we need to invert it. And we're going to just increase this uh, the exposure on that gate so it looks a bit more like that. Okay, now, shortcutting time. We're going to our styles and presets. Now, I think for this I want quite a um, summery, beachy vibe. So I'm going to have a look at these sunbound ones. And 
I mean, I don't I quite like this sort of orange and teal look. It's very Instagrammy, but I think for this shot, because it's a nice beach, it kind of it kind of works. Um, so I think what I might do, for the sake of argument, is let's go Serengeti, the regular one, apply to a new layer, and then we can go back and just tone down that look. We can also slightly bring down the exposure of it. And then maybe apply a new layer, fill that mask, and go to our color editor, grab those oranges, do that. Our yellows can go. Could our yellows go all together? Bring those oranges down because it is very orange. Our blue. We can stand to increase our cyan. We can stand to increase and push it into the blues. Hmm. I'll be honest, I'm not loving this shot. I'm not loving what I'm doing to it, but it's fine. You know, it, it kind of is what it is for the moment. Um, maybe I haven't selected the right filters or whatever but um, yeah I definitely think I could be doing a little bit better what's this one this is adjustment one let's just bring that sky down a bit more because it is a touch overpoweringly bright but also move the mask around <sighs> and maybe our color balance let's go back into this top layer can add a bit of blues down here Maybe on our highlights we could add a bit. I don't know. Let's maybe add a little bit of blue in the highlights as well. A bit less, something like that. Maybe our mid-tones we can add a bit of a bit more warmth. A bit more blue. Yeah, don't dislike, don't dislike adding a bit of this. I think that's helping it a bit. It's not a great shot, I'll be honest, it's not my favourite. <laughs> But um, I think we could bring those highlights down just a touch. Maybe play with those shadows. Okay, I mean, let's have a look before. Before it was very green and yellow. Um, I'm not sure it really kind of stood out as a shot at all. I had this idea of it having this sort of tropical beach scene. And this is what we've done. I don't like what I've done. So... I'm not ending on a good point. Um, I think these uh, this edit is too much. I think it's too, um, I don't know, just too overprocessed. I would really like to know what you think of shot number four, whether you think it's good. This is going to be a little tease for those people who are actually going to watch all Christ knows how long this video is going to be because I'm not going to put this image in the beginning of the video so it'll be a little surprise at the end so let me know what you think have I gone overboard in this edit has that uh, have I gone too far or does this have like quite a nice summery beach vibe I really would be in genuinely interested to know what you think of this shot um, I don't know whether there's anything else I could really do to kind of pull this back um, you know, I could keep playing around with with things. I, I could honestly be playing for hours in this uh, with this image too. I mean, I've just done a couple of tiny tweaks here, and I, I don't dislike what I'm doing with it so far. Um, I, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep on because I could be going for for absolutely ages. So please do let me know if you think this is a a shot that you that you think looks great. If you would have this printed out and put on your wall, um, or maybe what you would have done differently. Um, because I'm really not sure um, about it. It's not one of my favorites, and it's probably not something that would ever make its way um, into my Instagram feed. So yeah, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But overall, I really hope that it's been helpful to see how I would go about doing these kinds of edits in Capture One, how I would use these specific tools 
to transform some of my landscape images. If this has been helpful, do please hit that like button, uh, leave a comment underneath, would love to know what you think, and definitely please do consider subscribing if you don't already. It's a huge help to the channel, and I really think if you've enjoyed this, then you'll love some of my other videos and the other things I've got coming up. But for now, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.